All right. Um, hello. Hi. I'm going to sit here. I have a bum leg, but it's better than it was. It was a hobo leg, and now it's just a bum leg. Um, I'm, not, I'm not getting the love that the chair guys are getting. Okay. Anyway, I'm here to tell a story. The prompt that I got was to explain how Johnny Morbid got his new boots, and also I'm supposed to include pancakes. <laughs> Nothing could be stranger than a strange tale of the open stage. Johnny Morbid and the new boots. Johnny Morbid was a man of action, his rousting skills of legendary note. He stomped and swept, always with awesome traction, at least until his boots came down with bloat. Most people think that boots are things you wear, but they contain a magic deep and wide. Unlike a hat, they're always in a pair, and twice the benefit do they provide. Johnny's shoes, a sickness, had contracted. The souls came loose and they began to speak. They flapped and clapped and left Johnny distracted. The shoes no longer functioned at their peak. They puffed and swelled to heroic proportions. Though not with many heroes could they roam, the bloat gave them great comical distortions. On Sora's feet they would be right at home. Even though these boots he loved and cherished, Johnny made the choice they would retire. Though they'd been good clown shoes, their power perished, and Johnny burnt them on a funeral pyre. <laughs> I get emotional. Now, Johnny had to find a quick replacement. He noticed that his rousting skills had waned. So rather than in socks suffer debasement, he sought new shoes to see his strength regained. Chopped out eBay and Craigslist altogether, but nowhere could he find new boots of power. He saw ads advertising lots of leather, but they just made him want to take a shower. <laughs> he then resolved to search in new locations, so to the back roads did the journey lead. Crossed over hill and dale in all creation, yet Johnny found no boots to suit his need. And as he reached the end of all directions, he came upon a cabin made of meat. What? <laughs> he had heard of gingerbread or some confection, but this one had those other stories beat. He knocked upon the door with some reserve, and a woman came outside upon the step. Her greeting more robust than he deserved. It, you'd think that she was meeting Johnny Depp. <laughs> the woman hugged him over his objections and cackled with a happy sort of glee. <laughs> Way out here at the end of all directions, no one has ever come to visit me. The woman led him in, and to his surprise, the room was dominated by an oven. Now, John was thinking, once I am inside, the furnace was the place she planned to shove him. <laughs> that was a terrible rhyme. <laughs> <clears throat> But thankfully, this was not her intention. She just wanted to treat him as a guest. She fed him plates of fresh pancakes and bacon and offered him the couch to take a rest. Aww. Morning came, and without molestation, Johnny felt refreshed and fully fed. But the woman sensed his deep frustration this fruitless quest that to her doorstep led. She asked him if he cared to share his worry. He told her of his shoes and their foul curse. His rousting skills went absent in a hurry, and now his socks had holes, which made it worse. The woman smiled and shuffled to her stove, and Johnny heard a sizzle and a hiss. The witch, she sang, and in her chanting wove a mighty spell that sort of went like this. Oh my. 
Spirits come with power and restore, birth anew the skill that has been taken. From these boots the young man had before, and place it in these boots I've made of bacon. <laughs> yeah, bacon. She handed Johnny shiny shoes of meat, and through them magic essence brightly burned. The power flowed from head down to his feet as he could feel his rousting skills returned. So Johnny bid the friendly witch farewell and gave her a chaste kiss upon the cheek and traveled back across the hill and dell, a mighty and rebooted circus freak. I have to apologize. I completely made that entire thing up. I absolutely made that up. That is not how Johnny got his shoes. Anyone that has seen his boots, and you've seen a lot of Johnny tonight going up and down, those boots are not made of bacon. If they were made of bacon, you would have seen people chewing on his feet for the entirety of the night. No one... Oh, God. Oh, God. Sorry, Johnny. I told them they weren't bacon. Okay. The problem with this is, is I made this up, and I realized that it would probably satisfy everyone and everyone would laugh. But at the same time, I realized that I owe you more. So, like Johnny, I went on a journey of my own to find out the real reason that Johnny has new boots and how he got them. And it turns out that strange tales of the open stage are even stranger than I thought. I had traveled all over the place. I went to the end of all directions, did not find a friendly witch, did not even find any idea why Johnny had these new boots or where he got them. I was on my way back and I was coming through Amarillo. Yeah, I know Amarillo. And I got bit on the ankle by a Gila monster. A Gila monster. Gila monster. Nice, you got it. I only had one person get it, and he's over here, and you can't even hear him. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> it was a Gila monster. Gila, H-E-E-L, Gila monster. Anyway, I digress. I was injured. I had to stop and rest. I sat down next to a rock, and it just so happened to be next to a bonfire where there was this old cowboy sitting. And it happens in Amarillo. So I'm out in the desert. It's starting to get cool. I'm gathered around this fire with this old guy. He asked me, what am I doing out here? And I told him I was looking for how Johnny Morbid got new boots and where he got them. He said he knew the story. Amazingly, he knew the story. And he relayed it to me. I wrote it down. This is the actual story of how Johnny Morbid got his boots. News flash. News flash. Unfortunately, I can't really read this in the way that it was given to me without a prop. I'm going to need a prop. Everybody's been getting up and getting props and stuff tonight, so I'm going to get up and get a prop. In true open stage fashion, I need a prop. Throw me a hat. Just throw me a hat. Whee! Thank you. <laughs> what the? Weird hat. Howdy. Okay. Howdy. Gosh. <laughs> okay. That's going to make this easier. The old man was talking to me, and he sat back against a rock. And he got real quiet and was smoking a cigarette and he started telling me the story. He said, the devil went down to Texas. He was looking for a home-cooked meal. He had a need to dine, but not inclined. Hell's food had no appeal. When he came across this young man with a griddle piping hot, and the devil right there pulled up a chair and said, boy, let me tell you what. I bet you didn't know it, but I'm a chef of some repute. Oh, yeah. Now you got a pretty hot griddle, boy. And if you take a chance and take a bake and make a bet with you, now the devil will get his due. I'll bet a griddle of gold against your soul because I can cook better than you. 
The boy said, my name's Johnny and you should leave in this here cafe. Your bet I'd take, but I don't bake and gold would melt away. Had no need for a griddle made of gold, it'd melt. You yeah. couldn't cook anything on oh, it. Oh, duh. Science. <laughs> okay. Johnny was a man they'd say I'm happy to report. He'd never play around with food or orders that were short. He really had no use at all for a griddle made of gold, but if I stop here, the story stays untold. The devil was a wily one. He had a hunger gnawing hard. He knew that day there'd be a way to make John drop his guard. He fired his hibachi and he made an evil hiss. And he started stirring batter with some gouda and some swiss. The devil looked at Johnny as he threw in nuts and fruits and Johnny looked straight back at him and then he saw his boots. Yeah. Now here the story takes a turn because those boots were sweet. And no surprise in Johnny's size, they'd look great on his feet. Old Scratch could keep his griddle and his metal so unfit, but Johnny saw temptations in those boots. They were the shit. <laughs> the devil smiled an evil smile, and wider did it get. Johnny, did I hear you right? You gonna take my bet? We gonna have a cook-off and the better get surprised. I win, I get your soul. You win, you get boots in your size. Johnny nodded once. Then he slapped the order bell. His waitress brought a ticket here to the Iron Chef of Hell. And Satan laughed because he knew of Johnny's big mistake. The ticket said a word of dread. It simply read, pancakes. The devil took up his batter and he said, I'll start this show. And fire flew from his hibachi as the heat began to glow. With total concentration and a flip that's never late, he called his demon sous chef and said, hey there, bring a plate. With pride and slick maneuvers, he laid down a hearty stack. He was sure he'd win that soul and never give it back. Johnny sat there silently and he watched till he was through. And then he took up his spatula in his hand and began to cook them too. Fire in the stovetop, watch them rise. Johnny's pancakes were double size. Best pancakes, I guarantee. And Johnny's pancakes were gluten free. <laughs> the devil bowed his head because he knew that he had been beat. He knew for sure his goose was cooked when he sat down to eat. He took off his shiny boots and he sat there in his socks. But in the end, he'd do it again because Johnny's pancakes rocked. Johnny said, old devil, come back if you ever want to try again. I'll tell you now, you son of a gun, I'm the best it's ever been. Remember these words, fire in the stovetop, watch them rise. Johnny's pancakes are double size. Best been made, I guarantee, Johnny's pancakes are gluten free. And that's a story of how Johnny Morbid got his new boots.